먹어도 붙다. 어, 바니시아! 바니시아, 오래가. 나만이 기다! Exactly. This is change, man. And these silly shenanigans are no longer welcomed here. 아, 고아! 쇼벤치기 데시모치다! 아, I don't understand. This is change, man. Why are you trying to be silly? Welcome, I am the Kaiju no Kami, and today I am reviewing 1985's Dengeki Sentai Change Man. After Bioman, Hirohisa Soda planned to have his next Sentai series deal with the Rangers traveling across outer space, utilizing the title Uchu Sentai Cosmo Man. <laughs> Plans changed, the series went from being about a bunch of astronauts into one that revolved around an Earth military. Thus, Dengeki Sentai Change Man was born. This show would go on to become the second longest running Sentai series thus far with 55 episodes under its belt and two original theatrical movies. It also featured the first ever female White Ranger and was the first team that featured two female Rangers without a Yellow Ranger being present, something that no one would see happen again until 2013's Kyoderger. In addition, it is the first series to have its Ranger motif based on mythological creatures. Changement has been a series that people have been hyping up for me for years. In fact, I was told it was 55 episodes because of how popular it was in Japan, but it turns out that is not exactly true. See, Flashman was having production issues when it was filming, and as such, Changement had to be extended by an additional few weeks because of Flashman's issues. So, does Changement live up to the hype that has been stated for me? Well, let's break this show down and find out. The Heroes Change Man is about five soldiers who are under the command of the Earth Defense Force and they are given powers by a mystical energy known as the Earth Force. Kicking off our team of sports bra wearing superheroes is our Red Ranger, Hiru Surugi. Wait, nope, sorry, that's the Blue Ranger, Yuma Ozura. <laughs> This is Surugi, played by Haruki Hamada. Yeah, it's kind of hard to tell the difference between the two, especially when they're in their gray uniforms and there's long distance shots. However, if you keep in mind that Chiro Izumi would go on to play Dragon Ranger Barai in Jew Ranger later on, then it makes it a bit easier to keep them apart. The Black Ranger Shohayate. <laughs> is played by Kazuoki Takahashi. Haroka Nishimoto portrays the first female White Ranger, Sayaka Nagisa. <laughs> Lastly, Mai Sabasa is played by Mai Oishi. <laughs> Unfortunately, this is one of the blandest Ranger teams I have ever seen on screen. There isn't too much to say about them due to how one-dimensional they come across. The only Ranger who really stands out to me is Hayate, and that is really because he ended up having the most episodes dedicated to himself. He is the playboy ladies' man of the group, always combing his hair and trying to be badass. Hayate, Wait. It's immortal, not mortal. Wrong music. He does have some really remarkable stories though, and he is fun to watch despite his gullible nature. It also helps that the griffin is my favorite mythological creature, so he gains points for that too. However, if you were to ask me what his goal in life is, or where he came from, I couldn't tell you anything about it since nothing is ever explored on his part. The only character we really do get a glimpse on the past is Surugi. He was part of a baseball team when he was younger called Nangoku, and he utilized a special pitch people could rarely hit called the Dragon Ball. Hmm, I wonder if this was meant to be a hint at what the next anime adaptation Toei was planning was going to be. 
He also helped a young alien girl back when he was young. That is about the extent of his personality as far as things go. Ozora wants to own a restaurant in the future. And he can't sing for crap. <laughs> Sayaka puts the show one shot away from becoming Dengeki Hentai Change Man. <laughs> While Miles suffers from Disney Princess Itis. <laughs> that is about all I can tell you about this Ranger cast, which is a shame because with 55 episodes to its name, you would think they could have given more personality to their cast. There are a lot of really great melee battles, and they are all pretty well shot. I really like how they're posing, and their movesets are kind of reminiscent to the mythological beasts they are based on. Sadly though, most of these fights revolve around the generals and foot soldiers, as every episode ends up with the rangers just shooting and blowing the monster of the week up with their bazooka. Hell, there is a fight with one of the commanders in the series that resorts to nothing more than one ranger shooting, the commander blocking, another ranger shooting, him blocking again, and then the bazooka is used to win the battle. It's kind of lame and sometimes feels like I'm watching a Godzilla Heisei movie. That's not to say that it's not cool when they shoot and everything, but I want to actually see the rangers fight the monsters of the week, not just kill them. Although this bait and switch is kind of cool. There is a good amount of supporting cast, but they are underutilized. First, we have the Rangers commander and mentor figure, Yui Ibuki. He is the standard type about knows everything about anything that occurs, making him feel like a plot device more than a character. He does have something else that occurs in the last few episodes of the series that I will not divulge on due to spoilers, but I wish this is something they had developed earlier on so they could have made use of the potential this character had. We get a girl from Planet Raijo named Nana. Greetings, Earthlings. I am Kang. Wrong Raijo. Raijo is a highly advanced planet of technology, and the aliens are constantly trying to use her capabilities for their own gain. Anyone from a species that has mastered intergalactic travel, raise your hand. Still not that Raijo. She makes several appearances throughout the show and is, from my understanding, the first Sentai child to age. Sorry, Transon Rije. Finally, the staff that helps out in the control room were also people who were candidates for the Earth Force, and they have an episode where the Rangers feel helpless, so they go out and try to fight for them despite not having powers. <laughs> It doesn't work out so well for them, but it's another neat idea that was wasted. The villains! On one hand, I want to applaud Toei for going out of their way and actually developing some of their villains. On the other, I want to just smack them for stupidity because they should have balanced out the development for the villains and the rangers. The villains are a group called the Great Gozma Star Cluster. Each member is a warrior from a conquered planet that has pledged their loyalty and services in hopes that doing so will restore their planet to Gozma's great planetary king, Bazu. <sighs> Bazu? He's better suited being called Bozo. Not only does he not look even remotely threatening, but when you learn his true identity in the finale, you will be laughing your ass off at how dumb his soldiers were for thinking him as a threat. While there have been uninspiring rulers in the other series I have seen, Bozo takes the cake at being the worst of them all. Even Genius from Jewelger was better thought out. Well, anyway, his associates are Commander Giluk, a former space pirate known as Booba, the original Doctor Girlfriend Shima, a cave troll named Gator, and Gyodai. I've got nothing for that guy. As I said, we do get some development for a few of these characters, especially Booba, Doctor Girlfriend, and Gator. <laughs> Ah! 
but the former two are not until the last few episodes of the show, and I feel discussing them would tread into spoiler territory. However, we never learn why Shima has a man's voice. She just does. Are you smoking? It all makes sense. The filled ashtrays, the burning pine-scented hairspray. I guess I'll say it. Her three-pack-a-day voice? Why couldn't you just tell me, you liar? Well, because you liar. do that. Liar! As for Gator, we learn early on that he is a wife and a son, and we get a few episodes that feature them as the series progresses. His wife really wants him to come home, and she is afraid to tell their son the truth about what he is doing. Jodai does get an episode for himself, and that is about it. His entire purpose for being there is to make the monsters grow. <laughs> They even try to give him more energy so he could make monsters grow at an infinite rate without success. Save 15% on monster insurance by switching to Geico. It also doesn't help that you would think by the halfway point the rangers would know he was going to show up and then would be prepared to shoot him before he could make a monster grow but whatever that would require the writers to use ingenuity when making the monsters grow afterwards giluk goes through a transformation later on in the show however some of it drags on for episodes longer than it should have <laughs> You could also play a drinking game on how many times they say Super after he does get his upgrade. I understand his name is technically Super Giluk, but you don't need to call him Super every single time. Super Giluk! Super Giluk! Yeah, now it's a party. We have another villain who appears towards the end of the first quarter named Ahamas. Ahamas. <laughs> She is briefly mentioned early on in the show as apparently her and Giluk attempted a failed rebellion against Bozo and she was believed to have been killed in the process. I'm not exactly sure how they could fail against this loser, but whatever. Her intentions make no sense to me as she starts off capturing Boba and Dr. Girlfriend in the hopes of turning them to her side against Bozo, only to then suddenly ask Bozo for forgiveness like five minutes later because... Oh. She also gains an upgrade later on the show that allows her to beat the Rangers with invisible walls. <laughs> Well, at least I know who the game designer was now behind the recent Godzilla game. In addition, she reveals she has a two-headed bird dragon for a pet, one of which shoots ice and the other fire, named Jangiran. <laughs> Despite the negatives, Ahamas is probably my favorite villain of the series because she does improve as the series moves on. Although, I really do like the stuff they do with Boba in the last few episodes. The foot soldiers are Hydra soldiers. I love their designs, and they feel like foot soldiers that are threatening if you didn't take them seriously. Definitely one of the best group of critters for the franchise. The monsters of the week are called Space Beast Warriors. Like 
like the generals, these monsters are all from conquered planets who have also pledged their services to Bozo in hopes of restoring their homeworld. From a design standpoint, I wasn't all that thrilled with them, yet there are still some highlights. Zobby is an interesting monster as his body has a will of its own, so when you chop off his head, the body will make wanton acts of destruction as it searches for it. That was actually a pretty cool idea, I don't recall being redone in another Sentai series since. We have a rock star villain named Baruta. A headbanger deemed Dobun. And an interesting creature that can turn crayons deadly named Pain. My favorite monster of the week though is Zune. She looks like a mutant gorgon and for the vast majority of the episode she has a cool looking mask like face. Honey, you got real ugly. The Mecha. Unlike the other Sentai series I've already reviewed, Change Man only features one giant robot. Change Robo is its name. It is compiled of three vehicles, Jet Changer 1, Hella Changer 2, and Land Changer 3. <laughs> They are stored in a shuttle called Shuttle Base. There is nothing special about the vehicles at all, as they are just generic looking. Change Robo looks like they just copied the design of Dino Robo, but gave him a new color scheme with eyes instead of glasses. It also doesn't help that I feel both machines copied Die Ruger 15's look. To make matters worse, Change Robo doesn't really do very much. Hell, they could have just made the monster grow and had a disembodied voice scream, finish him, since that is really all Change Robo is there for. <laughs> Fatality. You could pretty much skip the mech battles and miss nothing. None of them serve the plot whatsoever. There are even episodes where he was not needed at all for there was no reason to make the monster grow. But heaven forbid an episode go by without there being one because a child may suddenly lose interest in the toy if it isn't featured in a single episode. Money. On the positive side, Change Man is the first show to feature underwater mech battles, so I do have to give you credit there. Effects and music. This is the one area where I really do have to praise Change Man, even if it is not always perfect. There are some lackluster effects as the blue screen effects look pretty awful. Bombs that are shot out or Hydra soldiers that appear from the ground are done really poorly and the image is extremely faded looking. Fortunately, the rest of the effects work is solid. <laughs> There are some outstanding camera angles and shots used during fight scenes. We also get a really nice sunset battle that takes its cues from Dire Ranger. I reviewed Die Ranger first, didn't I? Clearly, Toei actually did that first in Die Ranger and then wanted to start that trend sooner, so they went back in time to implement it. Another aspect I love revolves around the locations used. There are some areas here that I have never seen used in any other show after it, such as this Holland Park. <laughs> and a Nagasaki Biopark. <laughs> These were really outstanding locations. Not to mention I love watching the rangers ride on jet skis at times during like these bits. Although I must admit, because of a recent commercial, when I see these jet skis on screen, I just want to hear this following. Rider, 
Tatsumu Yano and Katsuo Ono are credited for being the composers to the show. They have provided some excellent music, especially during the fight scenes. <laughs> Another favorite track of mine is used only once, but I love the tribal sounds it incorporates. The opening song, titled after the show, and the ending theme, Never Stop Change Man, are sung by Yoshiaki Sagara. They do their job effectively, although Never Stop isn't all that memorable to me. I've pretty much forgotten it the moment it stops, as opposed to the opening, which is still stuck in my head. There's also an interesting episode where they distorted the soundtrack. I'm not sure if this was intentional or maybe just something went bad on Toei's masters, but it is kind of cool. The episodes. Chain Man was one of those shows that started out really weak, got really strong in the middle, and then kind of just fizzled out in the end. I'm going to be blunt and say it right now. The final episode is hands down my least favorite episode of the show. I absolutely hated it. The ending was crap, the reveal behind Bozo was trash, and the final battle sucked. It is easily one of the worst final battles I have ever seen in any Sentai show, harming the overall enjoyment of this series, which is a shame given the amount of death this series had in its wake. For example, there's an episode where an alien girl comes to Earth to visit Tsurugi. She has striped on her skin and as such is scared to be seen on the planet with them so she has a space beast remove them so she can appear to be a normal human it features a lot of symbolism towards racism that you wouldn't expect to see in a children's toy commercial <laughs> You also have the fact that the villains are pretty much slaves doing what they are doing because it's the only way to survive. My favorite episode is the one that features Baruta, Gozma's big star. Thank you! Thank you, baby! Baruta comes to Earth to help his bosses defeat the Rangers. It is not very deep in plot or character development, but it is the episode that I had the most fun with. <laughs> I especially love how silly things were getting to the point that Ozura had to scream this. I like how it also tells us that there are hundreds of planets out there that are suffering from Gozma. It adds a really nice spin on the show that the Earth is not the only planet in peril if Change Man loses. There are some other fun ones that involve the Wild West. <laughs> An adorable plot. <laughs> and one where Surugi has to fake his death and becomes a masked Avenger to beat a monster that looks like the distant cousin to Ultra 7's Metron. Sadly though, there are several plot lines that go nowhere. There is one episode where Mai falls in love with an Earth Defense Force doctor the moment they meet, the doctor ends up flying out to help another planet at the end of the episode, and that is it. This event is never mentioned again, nor do we ever see the doctor again. <laughs> There is also an episode with a message from a prophet regarding Bozo's identity and weaknesses that is also left without any follow-up. <laughs> 
sure they discover who Bozo is in the final episode, but they could have done something sooner to develop this plot and maybe I wouldn't have an issue with it. The movies. Change Man was actually the last series to have two original theatrical movies instead of a compilation movie or a team up. The first features a monster that takes over a science lab and Gozma sets up a bomb using specialized crystals that will destroy the entire planet. I really like the way this movie does a clock countdown to signify how much time is left and it does have some solid fights. There is a really good battle on a train. <laughs> And then what is probably the best mech fight out of the entire series. This is most likely done because the movie does run 7 minutes longer than the normal episode. Second movie features a monster thing that takes over the shuttle base for a bit until he is forced to crash thanks to a radio created by a child. It's the exact opposite to the first movie as the plot is dumb and the fights aren't even all that great. The battle inside the shuttle base is probably the best thing about it, however the highlight for me is this scene with Gator. I'm not exactly sure why Toei felt the need to do a second movie, as it would have worked fine as a standard episode. As I said at the beginning of the review, this show has been hyped up to me for years by its fans, and sadly I just don't think it lived up to that hype. It's a lot like O-Ranger, it has a lot of great ambitions, a lot of great ideas, but they are all bogged down by a poor Ranger cast and bland, uninspiring mech battles. Thus, like Old Ranger, I give Change Man a 3 out of 5 grown-ups in spandex. It's not exactly average, but it's not exactly great either. I was entertained with what I saw on screen. However, a lot of the ideas that have been implemented into this show have been redone later and executed better. Still, it is a prime candidate for being Soda's best work, and I highly recommend it. It is definitely one to check out. Until next time, bye. Toilet seat. Other people might need the toilet seat. Put it back.